Greetings, salutations, hello, hi, and welcome to my PID tutorial. As usual, you can find timestamps pinned in the comments and disclaimer that PIDs and breadboards will never work the way you want them to if your propulsion has problems, which is probably the topic of my next video. But for now, PIDs. Anyway, here we go. First of all, you have two options. AI PIDs and general purpose PIDs. They're found in different parts of the UI. So you have AI PIDs in the AI tab and it's just called PID and it's right next to the mainframe. And then you have in control, the general purpose PID, which is next to the non AI breadboard in the control tab. So what's the difference between the two? Well, let's start with a general purpose PID because that's the most simple in a way. And that's because it does just what you ask it to do. Um, it does not need an AI connection and it will just work all the time unless it's destroyed, of course. Now, typically you will just want to set up a fake set point and I'll explain this in a minute. You just give it the info and it just does that, and it does that all the time. The AI PID can be used in a few different ways, however. So first of all, you need to access it through the mainframe rather than through the PID block itself. And you'll notice that I can only enable one access because I've got only one PID attached to my mainframe. Now there is nothing stopping you even if you don't enable the controller to go into one axis and set it to none. And that, in theory, um, you know, bugs aside, should disable that AI's control over that axis, which can be helpful if you're setting up general purpose PIDs because that prevents the AI from fighting the PID. However, you can enable the controller in order to change how the AI works um, how it controls your vehicle because the AI will inherently by default uh, use the PID to control your vehicle and the only way to tweak these numbers on an AI is to attach an AI PID now you can also override it by setting up a fake set point to whatever you want but that's a little bit less convenient with AI PIDs for reasons I'll explain in a minute. Because the real point of an AI PID is to be able to tweak these numbers. And the fake set point is actually set by the AI. Which is different from the general purpose PID. However, you'll notice something. If I go back here and enable the fake set point. Now let's just set it to zero and let us, yes, this is set to zero. Now you cannot change the fake set point on an AI PID using an ACB, but the AI can control the fake set point. On a general purpose PID, the AI cannot affect the fake set point, but an ACB can. So if we go in here, you'll see under the AI tab, you have general purpose PIDs. And at the bottom, you have a whole, like a ton of options. But the main one that I would use personally is a fake set point value. And I here have it set to 10. Now if I test that and I go back here, you'll notice it's now 10. It was zero a moment ago. And this here is still set to zero. That's the big difference. Now, what usually scares people away from PIDs is actually setting them up, right? Putting in the right settings in there so that they work and do what you want. I'm gonna start with a general purpose PID. And I actually recommend, even if you're getting into breadboards and if you intend to use a breadboard PID, to actually mess with this a little bit because the graph here, which is also available on AI PIDs, by the way, is actually pretty useful to troubleshoot PIDs, which I'm gonna tackle a little bit later. But first, how do you set it up, right? So it's a general purpose PID. 
it doesn't know even what axis you want to control by default. So unless you know what you're doing, you should put an input and an output that match, right? Pitch with pitch, um, altitude with, where is it? Propulsion vertical and roll with roll and so on, right? Now you don't have to do this with the AI PID because, well, you just saw me click here, pitch controller. It knows what you want it to control. But the real magic happens afterwards, right? So you'll want a set point for your general purpose PID. You may want a set point for your AI PID, but not necessarily. But what you definitely want is to tweak these values. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated, but I'm going to try and do my best to make this really simple. All right, so I switched to something a little bit more, you know, smaller to illustrate my point very clearly. So here is an altitude PID, right? Altitude and propulsion vertical. And now we're going to look at all of the variables. So I set up the fix set point to 20. You'll notice I'm not at 20 meters. And this is how I'm going to explain to you gain. Right now, if you look at the graph, you'll see the blue bar. This is how hard my PID is pushing to try to reach my target. Yeah, my target altitude. And it's just not enough. How do you increase this? You increase gain. Boom. And now you see I'm actually using, I'm basically capping out maximum thrust, no thrust, and wobbling very hard to the point where it's actually losing control. But I'm now more or less reaching my altitude. Now, if I put in something a little bit more reasonable, and the first thing you need to understand is that reasonable is going to be different for each vehicle, depending on how much thrust is available on the axis you're trying to control. This is why you need the graph. Right now you can see that the green line, uh, actually you probably can't even see the green line because the green, the red and the white lines are all on top of each other. And that's because I'm at my target altitude and this is, yeah, it's pointing me uh, it's pointing out my desired altitude, my actual altitude and the integral, which we'll get to in a second. Now it's still wobbling, however, and that's normal. That's because there is no derivative time set right now. By default, it's 1.5. 1.5 should do a decent job, right? And boom, we flattened out the, um, the curve. Now derivative should be set pretty low, generally speaking, because it does, I'm gonna say magic, right? Just to simplify things, it does magic. But basically, the higher it's set, the more random events could destabilize your PID. Because derivative is basically looking into the past in order to try to predict the future. And the higher the number, the further into the past it's looking. And that's just unnecessary for most vehicles. Derivative is just used or should be used mostly to fix regular errors, right? Not random events. It doesn't help with random events. Like say you're firing a very high recoil gun. If you're firing that gun very slowly, derivative is not going to help you very much. If you're firing it regularly, it might be some help. Now, integral. This is something that a lot of people, especially people who are new to PIDs, leave off, right? It says time off, it's set to 250. Setting it to 250 is basically turning it off. Very high values make integral very unnoticeable. It's actually explained down there, even though that's a bit opaque um, and hard to understand in my opinion. So what does it do? Well, if we revert back to the very low setting 
we had earlier, which did not let us reach our altitude, right? It's struggling to get past 9 meters, even though our target altitude is 20 meters. What happens if we set up an integral of 5? Well, the white line's moving, and we are rising, and eventually it should stabilize. We're just staring at the graph, and there we go. So what just happened? Integral, or actually let me start by explaining gain, right? Gain, and that's the P in PID, that's proportional, right? So it's using a fraction of your available thrust to correct an error. And the greater the error is, the more thrust it's using, even for the same gain, right? So if I'm at zero meters, and I'm trying to reach 20 meters altitude with that gain, I'm only making it up to about nine or 10 meters because by the time I'm only 10 meters away from my target, the thrust I'm giving it is not enough to push me close enough because the error is smaller, right? The difference between 20 and zero is obviously 20, while the difference between 20 and 10 is just 10. So that's proportional. Integral is over time. Basically, the higher the integral is, the longer the PID will take to ramp up. What integral does is the longer you're off your target altitude, in this case, or you know your fake set point, the more it will push. And the higher the value, the longer it will take to ramp up. The lower the value, the faster it will ramp up. If I make this one, actually, let's disable it again, right? So we go back down to whatever. Now, if I set this to one, we'll see on the graph, it ramps up really fast and it actually overshoots and it's gonna settle slowly, but it's gonna settle because it's not gonna be able to um, reach 20 meters without the help of integral. The gain is too low, but that works. It'll work if you set it up to something reasonable. And again, that's going to be different for each kind of craft, right? Um, but this is extremely useful because even if you set up your vehicle to be stable when it's in perfect condition, if you lose some of your thrust in combat, then if you don't use integral, it will never make up for that loss of thrust which makes integral really, really important. And that's what it does. So now that we've got that out of the way and we have a general understanding of how PIDs work, how do we go about setting up a new vehicle? Well, there's no clear set numbers that will always work. And there's two different approaches, right? You can use a high gain and a high integral or you can use a low gain and a low integral, and that will more or less have the same result. But generally speaking, you wanna start with a really low gain. So here I'm using a number that's not quite enough to bring me to my target altitude, but not so low that I'm actually going down into the water, right? And I'm gonna increase that until I can reach my target altitude. Not quite there yet, it's getting close. Let's ramp it up a little bit more. Still not there. I think point one was just about the break point. We're keeping an eye on the graph, especially the blue line. Let's go a little bit overboard, right? So we're now reaching our altitude, and that's actually something you'd want to do. You want to start with a little bit overkill, and you're going you're gonna to see that wobble on the graph. And then you want to take it down a notch. And then you want to set integral, let's say, to 20 or so. 
and you'll want to use a derivative, I typically default to 0 0.5. Most values under one are pretty good. You can go up to about four or five, depending on your vehicle. It's a little bit risky. Weird things can happen when you use a high derivative, but generally speaking, you want under one second. It's just something I found to work best in my experience. So now I'm at my target altitude and I'm not jumping around, it's perfectly stable. I could leave it like that. Now, some considerations you might wanna think, right now I'm using jets just above the water. So if I lose some thrust and fall into the water, that's it, I'm immobilized. And that is why you often want to use a lower integral because that will cause the vehicle to ramp up faster if it ever loses some of its thrust. And you'll see it'll stabilize again. It should work just fine. If you see there's some weirdness, go back from the top, play with your gain, play with your integral, and make sure your derivative is set to something that's reasonable. And that's it. That's PIDs in, I believe, less than 20 minutes. So if you liked, if that helped you, if you like me or whatever, <laughs> please consider subscribing, commenting, and liking the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.